like him. And there's none above them. None like him and none above them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We glorify you. Come on, just lift your hand and say, Yeah, I glorify you. And you're worthy of all of our praise. Hallelujah. We worship. Hallelujah. We express our gratefulness. Hallelujah. And we express our gratitude and our thankfulness for the living and being inside of us.
meet you right where you are. They're going to meet right where you are. There you go. Bring your transgressions before. Hallelujah. Bring your transgressions before. I am part of you right now.
kind of what we talked about today. Mosiah and his presence. And he delivered us, man. Y'all want to understand that we've been working with uh, that sister and her husband all weekend. The most time, that sister been desiring deliverance and wanting deliverance and want these things uh, taken out of her. The most I honor in her request today. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Yes, it is. Yes. Ain't nothing to be scared of. And ain't nothing to be talking about if it's real or not. It's, it's real. All you got to do is encounter a demon. You know it's real. Go to some of them insane asylums. <laughs> You'll see how real demons are. Alright, so I'm going to put it on my head, right? Alright, I could. Alright, everybody okay? Alright, so we're going to be going into um, Exodus 19 and 6. Today we're going to be talking about a royal priesthood. A royal priesthood. Let's read Exodus 19 and 6. If somebody can see it and got a mic, let's get a mic. I want you to read that for me. Exodus 19 and 6. Today's topic is going to be royal priesthood. Alright, if somebody get it, they can start. What if you see it? <laughs> it's up there. You can start. Hallelujah. Exodus 19 and 6. Exodus 19 and 6. Read it strong. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. Now wait a minute. Wait a minute. Who is he talking to here? Israel. The Israelites, right? And he's telling them what? You shall be to who? A kingdom of priests. No, 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 no. You shall be to who? Unto him. Now, notice he said, ye shall be to me. A kingdom. Now it don't matter what nobody else feel about this. No matter what nobody else thinks. But he said, my portion is going to be these people and they're going to be a kingdom to me. Now it don't matter if you don't look like a kingdom now. Because we scattered, we ain't got no head over us. But he said, you still are a kingdom to me of priests. Who is the main one we're supposed to minister to being priests? Huh? Each not each other. That's good. Not just the nation. Not the ten times. Him. Him. Our first ministry of ministering is to the Most High. Because how can you minister to somebody else if you've not been in relationship with Him to minister to Him to get instructions? What we have been doing is everybody want to ministry, everybody want to go out and do, but ain't got orders yet. All right. You ain't been directed yet. You haven't been established to him as a priest. I ain't talking about established to where you was before. That's why we always say, when you come to this, I don't care about what title you had before <laughs> you got the rebirth. That's right. That title don't carry over. If you was a bishop, you ain't no bishop over here. You was a prophet, you ain't no prophet over here yet. That's what? You haven't been recognized yet. So he said, I want you to be unto me a, a kingdom, right? Keep going. And a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So who is he speaking to? So he said, you shall be a kingdom of priests to me. Now, what's your idea of priests? What does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? What does a priest mean? What's the job? A what? An intercessor. What is that? Speak to the most high on your behalf. There you go. There you go. And notice in Isaiah 59, he said, I've been looking for a man, I've been looking for an intercessor, and nobody answered that call. But he said, I ain't just one. He said, I'm going to make you a kingdom of priests unto me. And he said, what? I'm going to make you holy. What does holy mean? Set apart. What does that look like? Not doing what everybody else. The people ought to be able to look at you and say, there's something different. What's that apart? You got even them on this Israelite side. They ought to be able to look at you, okay, that ain't a good life right there. It's a little different. 
But then I, a lot of the Israelites, we crazy, just, just to be honest. Got a crazy, a crazy stigma about us. We holler, we yell, we talk about uh, white man devil, <laughs> women. <laughs> you need to be shut up and don't say nothing. That's damn what you see on YouTube. With the Power Rangers out there. <laughs> Try to tell somebody about they sin. But he said, you want to be a kingdom. I'm establish you unto me to be a kingdom of intercessors. So your first prerogative is to see what's on my heart and what's on my mind. As an intercessor, it ain't about you no more. You don't even hardly utter your own prayers before him about your individual life. Because what? My job is to intercede, is to be what? The mediator to get you from one place to another. This is why some people can get around you and just tell all their business to you. And you're just like, bro, we just, this right. You telling me all that? This is why as a nation, we are so willing to forgive. I'm not saying that we need to all the time. But we are one of the, if you look at us, we are one of the most forgiving people that there is. Right or wrong? Right. That's it when they come to each other. When they come to each other, I ain't going to forgive that nigga over there. Now, that ain't right. We forgive everybody else. We'll go, that boss can been a cuss us out. We'll go the next day and submit to him. But let your husband raise his voice. You shut down three weeks on him. Three weeks? He can't get a word out of you. Supervisor, the next day. Yes, sir, what you need, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Look at how we do each other. But he said, you're going to be a kingdom of intercessors. So what? Your goal can't be about you. Your focus has to be the nation first. Father, I'm not coming to you about my problems because I know when I sow to another, I'm going to reap what I sow. So if I pray so into about somebody else's problem, my problem is going to be taken care of. That's right. I'm showing the most high. I know you the most high. If he's the most high, why well, I'm worried about my stuff? Now think about this. If he established the end from the beginning, and already worked your problems out, why you got to remind them about it? Why are we sitting there crying about our stuff, showing what? We ain't got faith that he know what he doing. Oh, yeah, now that's hard now. I'd be like, man, oh, most high did you, but hey, man, come on. I'm, hey, come on. It's looking a little crazy. I've been praying all week, ain't get out of practice. because we think we ought to get a reward after we did what we're supposed to do. So we went on a fast. We think we're going to see something strong. This is your reasonable service. You don't get no extra bonus by doing your job. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But the most high, I want you to be a priest. I want to minister to you. I want you to come before me and ask most high, what's on your heart? What can I do for you in prayer today? What's the urgent need on your heart right now that I need to pray about? I ain't coming to you by me. I ain't coming to you by the brother I know because what? I'm a kingdom of intercessors for you, but the first person I'm going to intercede for is Father you. What can I do? Because we what? Work together in this kingdom because the only way his will going to get done on earth is through you. But what if you're so committed to your will that you can't even see what his will is? A kingdom of a nation of people that only intercede for themselves. That's what we became. Right or wrong? We became interceding by nobody but me. I'm crying and worship and praise and worship about me and my circumstance because it's all I did. But I realize you ain't wake up to be about yourself. You wake up to intercede by me. If your focus get off yourself, 
But what you got to do first, you got to go through the process. Because you the one made that decision. Y'all ain't talking bad to me. Y'all quiet? I'm a little strong today. You wouldn't talk that way though. Say it again. You wouldn't talk that way. Give him, give him what you mean. Give him a mic. How was, how was he talking? Yo, you, they gonna hear, they gonna hear on YouTube. We wasn't talking. Oh, that's strong. Say it again. Go ahead. No, we wasn't talking that way. Alright, so how was we raised in the religion of Christianity? What are you saying? Whenever you had a situation or a problem, you go before the most high for yourself and pray about that order to say, have faith. Just have faith. You don't have to do anything, just have faith. So when it comes to now, I'm learning now. When somebody else has a problem, sometimes I overlook it. Mm. But I got my own distractions over here. Mm -hmm. And I realize that I can't do that. If we, if we working together, then it should be a everything for everybody. That's it's right. Me. Yeah. That's why we should thank kingdom first kingdom. and be second. You cannot, let me show you what the most happened. The disciples, right? The disciples would watch Yeshua, Yeshua, right? And they would watch him do things from his prior life. They would look at him, hear him say, praise the dead, cast out spirits, like we just saying, and watch him do all those type of stuff, right? And they would ask him, teach us to pray. Notice what he said. The first thing he didn't say is my father, which is, which is in heaven. What's the first thing that he told them to consider? Our. What did that mean? My initial prayers ain't about me. I'm thinking about the nation. Our father. So I'm coming to you as a collective whole. The reason some of our prayers ain't getting through because they're too selfish about what we want. We want this done just for us. Not by how to benefit the nation. Come on, we'll sit you right there till you get Now you going to know what? Right there. Because you ain't got our father yet. We should have gone heaven. How will be God name. Now watch this. Thy kingdom. Not my kingdom. Die kingdom, do what? Die will. So how do you know his will is for you to get out of this situation in his own? Thy will be what? Done. But thy kingdom got to come. What is a kingdom? A kingdom is the mindset of a king that is bought into what is called a culture of a people. What? The king mindset has been infused into everyday living and has become a what? Culture. So now I live in a culture of what? The king's what? Domain. But the issue is, this is what my dad used to say, your kingdom got to go before his kingdom come. Because what? A kingdom is a kingdom. You got a kingdom that runs your house. Your mindset is the establishment and law in your house. And children are what? But what? That mindset has to go so what? The kingdom mindset can come. That's an intercessor. We got that. Let's keep going. Any questions? Go ahead. Is that, that you know, uh, the same way when they got ready to take the Messiah's life? He didn't want to go through it, so he asked to move the cup. But he knew they had to go through it because he knew that they on that line would need it. So is that the same as him saying, Okay, I don't want to go through this problem, but I do it because I know these people don't need it. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. All right, now, some of us, I'm going to say this and this is going to sound weird. Some of us have been blessed to walk the problem that we have. That's what I mean by that. I know what I'm looking for. Right, watch, watch all this. The most I said of all people, I can drop this problem on Twan. Because I know I know what I put inside of Twan. And I can I can even make Twan's situation so bad that it calls attention. Mm. Now everybody look at that Twan now. Yeah. It's embarrassing. Yeah. It don't look good, but Twan has been blessed to have this problem. Because what I'm gonna do inside of Twan, they're all gonna see. And I'm saying it's here. So don't make your embarrassment the thing that makes you give up. Because your embarrassment is setting up a table so yeah. somebody else can get strength. But the problem is not enough people know about your situation. Mm. So 
so you can't be that way. Because I want to be known. Hallelujah. Well, that's good. That's good. See the light. <laughs> so now I'm thankful, even though it seems crazy, but I'm thankful that you can see that I can I can handle this problem now. You done seen something in me that you done gave me this. Anybody can give up, but I got a determination, a tenacity. And I'm gonna stick in this thing and I'm gonna be the one to turn this thing around through with the instructions he gives me. Because I got too many people that I'm gonna meet down the road that's waiting on me. I'm, 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 say it. I'm glad you didn't give up. Yes. Because if you wouldn't have made it, I wouldn't be here today. Oh, oh, yeah. I was watching you, even though I ain't say nothing, but I was looking at what you was going yes. through. I was looking at your hurt and how you still stood, oh, how you God. still lift your hands, oh, how you still gave me praise. Somebody walk by and catch you. 
before you know it, I walked by again. I was it again, before you know it, and it made a conversation. See what I'm saying? So what he ended up doing? Chose a brand from the woman. Now what men, we gotta stop doing this thing when we strong enough to handle temptation. That's right. That's a lot of us that fail before me. I if you don't put yourself in a situation, you won't have an opportunity to fall. That's right. Because you ain't strong enough. I ain't counseling no woman in no room with the door closed by myself. That's right. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. You come, no, 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 I can't counsel you that. You need to go for something else. Come in here, just dress up him. Talking about, all right. I need some cash. No, that don't be what mothers. You feel what I'm saying? What number is this? Joseph. I'm going to give that to this. Joseph. Ran from the woman, and he was. I would have been looking for a blessing. I got past that temptation. I done ran. The most high finna honor me. He went to jail. <laughs> Prison. I would have been like most high. I ran from that woman. I ain't knocking down. I ain't knocking down. <laughs> we always looking for what? Our blessing because we think every season is our season. So we have a false sense of reality. That's right. Thinking that we all and, and, and listen, you are blessed, but it just ain't your season every season. You have to discern what season you are. Some of went to fall. So I can do that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Alright, now let's keep going. Alright, so y'all remember what we talked about uh, a week or two ago about the ancient concept of Genesis, right? We're going back there. That is different, right? We're looking at Genesis from an ancient perspective. Everybody say, Father, Father give, me back give me back my ancient mind. Ancient mind. Give, me back give me back my ancient mind. Ancient mind. Because again, we can't see the scriptures through the way we look at them. We have to understand how it was given to them and how they would have understood it. Right? All right. Let's keep going. So watch it says. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Alright? Alright. So, real quick. If God created the heavens and the earth, has He created anything without purpose? So how can He have a creation that's formed and void if He created it became that way. It became that way. So something happened. All right, let's keep going. Now, all of this terminology is words that people in the ancient Near East would have looked at different. All right? They would have looked at face of the deep. They would look at void and darkness, and they would have seen something different than what we see. All right, let me show you the difference between a Greek mindset of what we think with first and the ancient mindset. I'm going to keep going in a minute. Greek thought describes the object in relation to its appearance. But Hebrew thought, Hebrew, Hebrew thought describes the object in relation to its function. It's not because when we look at creation, we look at how beautiful it is, it's shining, it's, it's nice, beautiful, all that type of stuff. But the most high is not allowed to the most high unless it have function or unless it have purpose. So now the earth became outside of the Most High purpose. So it wasn't allowed to the Most High. Because it didn't have a purpose. Just like I can have the most beautiful car sitting out there. All right, what's one of the uh, nice cars that some of y'all want? Young man, if you can buy, buy your car right now, what car would you want? A who? What kind? Boy, you got rich blood in you. A Ferrari. And got all the features. What color you want? Red. Red Ferrari. Now we're looking at all the features on it. But that Ferrari wouldn't be alive if it doesn't have an engine to run. It'd just be nice sitting there. But outside of its function and original purpose, the appearance don't mean nothing if the function ain't there. Alright. Say, you don't buy their fruit. No, 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 no,
A tree ain't just a tree to just be nice to be a tree. But the main function of the tree is to do what? So I'm not, I'm not looking at a tree by how pretty it is. I'm looking for if it's producing fruit. And then what fruit? That's right. If it's a banana tree and you tell me you're an apple tree and you're producing bananas. Right. You see what I'm saying? Let's keep going. Another example of Greek thought would be the following description of a coming pencil. It is yellow and about eight inches long. That's how Greek thought would look at it. But a Hebrew description of a pencil would be related to its function. Does the pencil write? I don't care about the adjectives. I want to know, does it write? That's how we see things. You see what I'm saying? Think about this. We do the same thing. We just got the Greek American thought. When it comes to getting married, comes to getting married, we put all the focus on how pretty that set one is supposed to be. Oh man, I tell you, we're going to get that old whitest, purest dress we can find. That's all the bridegroom with the bridesmaid. Look, baby, throwing the flowers out, have a nice play. We put all the beauty on what? The actual day. Rather than the function. That's right, that's right. How does marriage supposed to function? How do I function as a man? That's what you need to be getting ready for. How do I function as a woman? Because some of us have lost our relationship because we didn't understand the functionality from a biblical perspective of how marriage is supposed to do. We just got in it. Mm -hmm. We fell in our way. We fell in our way. Fell in our way. You see what I'm saying? All right, let's keep going. Let's see, I got to speed up, y'all. So what is function? Function is purpose, duty, or the way of something, or the way someone works, all right? Let's keep going. In ancient, in ancient times, near East culture, existence is defined by having a focus, a role, and a purpose in an orderly system, not by having material substance. So if the moon was there, if the sun was there, and it's not, uh, fulfilling its purpose, is it in an order system? Is it, does it exist to the most high? Just because it's created doesn't mean that it exists. That's right. Say that again. Just because it has been created doesn't mean it exists to the most high if it's outside of its original function. So can man be a creation of the most high but still not be existing to him? This is why he said, I don't hear what sinners pray. That's right. Why? Because you ain't in a functional covenant relationship with me. Therefore, I don't even see you as existing yet. I'm going to prove that scripture in a minute. Now, that sounds mean, though. But that's how he operates. Y'all quiet. So watch this. Good and complete means function properly in an orderly system. This is why when he spoke everything in existence, he said, let, he looked at the, the earth was void and it was formed and it was not like it didn't have function. And he said, let there be what? Let there be what? And that light became the functionality of earth and earth came alive. Because it was dead in its trespasses and sins. Y'all ain't got it. <laughs> Y'all got it. All right, so this is why he said, I'll get to that. Genesis is about function of origin rather than material. Let me tell you, the, the, the scripture is not worried about the age of the earth. Notice, the Bible don't care about stuff like that. It'll give you stuff, but the, the, the intention is now we just sit down, we be worried about how old it is. All these outside things, but most I say is it in my functional order. That's what I care about. That's why the scriptures don't talk about everything. That's right. So let's keep going. Go ahead. So we could. I'll show you something because when we made the Genesis story different than what it was supposed to be. Think about this. I said before you, the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, wait. How can a tree have fruit 
that's knowledge of good and evil. Is he talking about an actual tree? <laughs> we made it by a tree. They took the apple and they bit up their fruit. Right, right, right. But it came off of a fruit of a tree that had knowledge of good and evil or a tree of life. So how can it be something natural? Can I go outside and see a tree of good and evil right now? But we put the emphasis on the material of the tree rather than the function of what he was getting at. It's on color. Go ahead. This is changing. Is everything? It's on here. You see that body is completely different. Go ahead. Yeah, it's it's like taking it from that natural to you know it's like redefining. You pretty much redefining Genesis because it's like. He ain't even talking about time that things were created. He talking about this is it's talking different. To yeah. Me. Right now, it's speaking really speaking to my spirit. It's hard to put in words, but I want to say stuff, but I don't want to be going off. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like Earth people was already here when this was spoken because he's not talking about people. Like, I don't know. It's, it's we don't get in that. It ain't his lesson. Well, we don't get in that lesson. What that meant about trees. How the most high even look at us as trees. Yeah, we are. Any tree that doesn't bear by the what? By the tree fruit. You're gonna do what? No, then. That whole story is totally the serpent is the actual snake talking. Or is it talking about the function of how a snake functions? A whisper. A whisper. The function of how a snake represents that's embodied in a man. That's what it talks about the man of snake. All right, let me stop that. That's ain't we even took the name what we're talking about. <laughs> this is what? But we're going to get there. This one is about how y'all bring a functionality in order over non functionality in this order. So he created the heavens and the earth, right? Then the earth was without form, that was void and darkness. Now, I'm going to run through this because I already went over some of this, but I'm going to run through it to let y'all see that, that what I'm saying that it's not talking about, it's talking about something spiritual. Let me show you. All right, so now let's look at what without form means and void and darkness because something happened in between these times. If he already created a heaven and an earth, then what is the earth being void, formless, without form? Some happened that he had to reorder something and reconstruct something and start it again. Alright, let's go. And I can work. Ah, strong. Not strong, not in the spot, but he do the best thing he can do. <laughs> I need to do a little deeper study. Strong says, formless, the earth was in confusion. It always been scientific. Right, right. But it said the earth was in confusion, an unreality, and it was empty. All right? So let's also look at what void means. It was empty, it was void, and it was waste. So how can it be formless, have confusion, and waste be there? Transgression always bring confusion and what to your life? Waste. Yeah. All right, now. Right, go ahead. So it was a law already established. Yeah. If it was already if, it <laughs> <laughs> if he created the heavens before the earth, he had to establish a law in the heavens. That's what he ruled from. He don't rule from earth, he ruled from heaven. So the law was already established then, that's why he wanted to make what? Earth, just as it is and where? The same law, the same temple, the same everything was a re-establishment in the earth. We was doing patterns that was already in heaven. Oh, I. Let's keep on. So watch this. All right, so the word uh, well, formless is tahu in Hebrew. We're going to take the ancient words ta, hey, and wa. If you get your your tuh, which is your toe, your hu, which is your a, a, 
a wall, which is the root, tahu, all right? Tom means mark of covenant, hey means revelation, and wild means security. So what did it say about the earth? The earth was without a mark of covenant. The earth didn't have a mark of covenant. We were looking at it for the mark, the mark of the beast, and it was already there from the beginning. It ain't a chill that you can put in your hand. It's a mark of lawlessness. Anything outside of the covenant don't exist to the most high, so therefore has another mark on of the beast rather than the mark of what? Covenant. Now, I ain't saying go put no chip in your hand. That's right. As I said, still avoid the chip, whatever that is. <laughs> All right, watch this. The earth was without covenant. It was without revelation. Therefore, it had no security. So the earth was without the mark of covenant revelation. It didn't have the presence of Yah or security. All right, let's keep going. I already said that. All right. So the earth was without function or purpose. So remember, anything that's not functioning according to the way you originally established it doesn't exist to the most high. It's a creation of his, but it's not functioning. You see how important it is to get into his orderly system? Because anything out of order would bring pain to let you know it's out of order. When your body is out of his orderly system, what is it going to do? You're going to get some pain somewhere. You're going to feel something. Wait, wait, wait. Something, something happening. Something right. That means what? The system is knocked off. Yeah. Now I got to do what? I got to go to the doctor, a mother in goes in, in order to put what this body back in what? Proper order. Or I got to have surgery to put it back in what? Proper order. That's why the order of the most high is extremely important. Anything outside of order is the reason we have problems, is we have gotten outside of his original order. All right, that's why you can't have a young say spirit over here. That's right. Girls, girls rule the world. Girls rule the world. Girl power. Girl, yes. Women on the world. We ruling the world. We ruling everything. That ain't the mark of this cup. That's right. Yeah. I can talk that man any kind of way I want to. I dare him to say something to me. He got the honor if I'm going to submit. I, I, yeah. Uh-uh. You, you, ain't, you ain't with this dog right here. You ain't the daughter of Sarah. <laughs> you might be the daughter of Lil' Kim. <laughs> or Atlanta Housewives, because that's what you've been watching. Because you become what you potentially see. So if I potentially see that and I potentially hear that, I become what I potentially see in the And wonder why all of a sudden, in my relationship, my husband say something, my wife say something. <laughs> going crazy because why I'm intentionally watching women going crazy. Right. And think that ain't going to fit. <laughs> Continually watching sorry men around sorry men and think that ain't going to bleed off. Right. Without function. Alright, I got to roll y'all. I got to roll y'all. I'm talking to you. <laughs> Alright, so a priest has now we're going to look at this whole story right now from a priest's perspective. Priests have time on our side for the word. So watch this. Genesis 1, and God said, let there be light, and then earth became what? Function. And God saw the light that it was what? Good. Good, and from a Hebrew perspective, meaning complete. Light saw so it's complete. And God divided the light from darkness, and God called the light what? Day. Why did he call the light light? He called the light day, and what? The darkness what? Night. And the evening and the morning was the what? First day. The creation of time. The light in the beginning before the sun and the moon that got here was not the light because it had to have a function of time. Now everything is ran by our an, an encompass of what? The day and the night. That's where, what the insertion of time is built. So now we have a gift that has been given to us to run our lives. He stepped outside of eternity and gave us time. To what? Work out our problems, work out our situations, until what? The reckoning of time is over. Are we understanding this? <laughs> so let's, let's look at the gift of time. This time is precious now. That's why you can't spend all your time doing something, just doing stuff. You got to get on purpose. Why am I here? I'm tired of just being here. I don't want to just go to work, come home, deal with them cheering, 
and go to bed. And that's all my life. It's time to get on purpose, on purpose. But he gave us time. One of the greatest gifts that God has given us was time. Time pushes things back. It gives us relief from pain. That's why we didn't have the intensity of when the incident happened. Now, six months later, I can hear from him a little bit. Right. A year later, okay. I feel better. Now it's five years later. Now to get the time that made me hold. Yes. This is why even dealing with your children, dealing with family members, certain stuff, like you have to give it your faith, your hope, your love. The last thing you give is time. Allow what time to be your ally. As long as you're doing right, the most high gonna come and work on your behalf. That's what? Time got a way of taking care of something. Yes. But if you're such a person that like to rush to do everything, you want everything done your way, you're a control freak. Yeah. Most high gonna mess you up with time. You gonna, you gonna, you, 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 Giving it time because you still in here from the last one. And I give you somebody right now, you're going to run them crazy. You think you're good, don't you? You just ain't got nobody to awaken what's that, what that you ain't ever dealt with that's in you. Mm. Go ahead, y'all. So, so is that what happened with Sarah? Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly what happened with the Sarah and Abraham. They thought it needed to be done. Sarah like, oh, I'm old now. Ain't nothing working downstairs. <laughs> Ain't nothing working on Abraham either. He's old and he dead. Oh, <laughs> so she took to that promise and laughed at that night. But I received pleasure. <laughs> Sarah on the chain. Sarah ain't worried about just getting on <laughs> Sarah wants to have pleasure on the way to the baby coming. <laughs> Some of y'all are Sarah's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> or Sarah's son. <laughs> I, 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 I don't blame her. Why do we get my son together? <laughs> Time is an interruption in 